All right, and in this video, we're gonna actually add a little bit of styling to our project because, well, <laughs> We need it. Uh, that being said, we're gonna add Tailwind and you're gonna see that there is still a continual theme here along with the rest of the project so far for our Backyard Pizza uh, platform. And that is that all of these tools run through developer CLIs, they work with uh, in a composable way, none of them require the other pieces to exist, uh, except for maybe GraphQL code gens, Urkel plugin does require you to be using Urkel, but like that's a very weak connection. So uh, I'm gonna use Tailwind uh, because it just helps us create styles quickly. This is not a place to talk about the benefits or pros and cons of um, utility CSS frameworks, but that's what we're gonna be using in this case. So to add Tailwind, it's a very quick uh, project. We're gonna go ahead and simply add uh, Tailwind CSS um, Yarn add uh, developer dependencies, Tailwind CSS, post CSS, and auto prefixer. And we can go ahead and uh, run that inside of our uh, web folder here. And you'll notice at this point, we have not done like hardly anything with Hasura at this point. We set it up, we added our library, and it's just working. Like it's doing its thing, and we haven't had to think about it. The rest of it is all about our framework and our front end now. We're just figuring out how do we want to present this data? How do we get that strongly typed schema into our project? That's really one of the powers here of this uh, project is that we don't, with Hasura, you don't really have to be continually fiddling with the back end and, and changing things. It's, it's running, it's doing its thing. So we have the Tailwind added now and we're going to use the, uh, the CLI here uh, to go ahead and init the project. And it's gonna simply just spit out some content for us. We've got a couple of uh, files here. We're gonna swap out, and I'm just grabbing stuff from the documentation here. We're gonna to go to the Tailwind config file, and we're gonna simply replace that with their recommended Tailwind configuration. That's just saying we're looking for Tailwind specific CSS class names inside of anything in the pages directory or a components directory as per the standard of React applications. Uh, that being said, if you have, if you called your components something different, then just change the name there and it will be what's it, what it's looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and I'm gonna go ahead to our global CSS and just install the base styles inside of there. So inside of global CSS, we're just gonna pop in these utilities and now we've essentially got Tailwind running. <laughs> that was actually uh, all of it. And so what we're gonna do now is go up to our uh, our main index page here, and we're gonna just uh, delete our styles reference here, so we're no longer working with this uh, homes thing, and we'll just uh, drop out all of our uh, our uh, CSS modules real quick, and be able to simply work with um, all of our existing projects. Okay, so we have those all stripped out, and we're just working with vanilla CSS now, uh, C Tailwind now. And if we go to our project, if we go ahead and run the development environment, uh, which is still actually running, we'll see that basically it's now uh, very uh, neutral. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the server just to make sure we're not seeing any uh, carryovers. And if we go back to our project, uh, that's actually our live application. That's why there's no changes there here we'll see that we have this now very, very minimal. Uh, let's go ahead and modify this just a tiny bit. We're gonna go ahead and drop out the footer. And then we're going to uh, make sure there's nothing else here we wanna remove. We're gonna go ahead and change our title at this point to uh, BIP. And we're going to have a look at uh, our main content here, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of quick styles here on the top of my root level. We're gonna put a container around this, so we're gonna say, uh, you know, a div with a class name of um, container. I believe it is container is the name of the, the class. Yeah, so we have uh, some default stylings here. And uh, yeah, we've got basically Tailwind implemented. Um, obviously it doesn't look very good just yet, but we've got uh, something to work with and uh, and we can work with that. All right, so let's see if we can just maybe slap a couple of pieces here on top. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize a library that I personally like to use, uh, and that is gonna be called a Daisy UI. And Daisy UI is just a really simple way to have some really clean components. Let's have a quick look at the uh, project here uh, that works really well with, uh, with Tailwind. And so you just get some nicely styled uh, UI elements out of the box. 
And this allows you to be able to get things like modules, tabs, other pieces that will help us build out our uh, project here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and add uh, Daisy. It's a rather simple process. You can see exactly how we install this here. So we're gonna uh, add uh, Daisy here, and then we're gonna add this to our plugins. So we'll start with uh, actually just adding that to the plugins because it's already my pasteboard. And then we're gonna go ahead and add uh, the dependency. All right. That is going to be a uh, runtime dependency, so we'll, we'll uh, add that as is. We will save the config, and from there, everything is uh, fine. We're going to go ahead and grab some themes here. And so with the themes, we're able to actually add them into the Daisy UI uh, exports here of our Tailwind config, and we can just sort of uh, pick some, some styles here that we might like. So we're going to head over to uh, the plugins, and then just below plugins now, we're gonna add the Daisy UI uh, themes directory, and I am gonna pick one of these to just drop at the top. I think I'm gonna put, um, let's have a quick look at the themes here, see if there's one that we like. We'll look at the themes. And we can see here's the style. Black looks like it might be a good candidate. Forest is kinda of cool. Cyberpunk, this is a pizza party, so what would it be a good fit? We're gonna go with, we're gonna go with Cupcake. And cupcake it is. So we're gonna put that at the top here. I'm just gonna cut this and uh, paste it to the top. This is the um, fallback uh, dependency tree for themes. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, look at our project and we should be running now with uh, Daisy. So we go here to the website. We can see that it's already applied uh, some global styles here. And we're gonna go to a component and we're gonna just try and have a quick look at a layout. So we go to layout here we can see that we have this top level, um, uh, we have the container, and we're gonna just add some basic, uh, basic pieces here. So we're gonna go back to Tailwind on our main app. So we have container, we're gonna say MX Auto, and we're gonna say uh, Max W is gonna be a 5XL, which should give us a centered uh, content and then we can go ahead and pop a header on there from Daisy UI just to kind of have a look at how this modifies our project. I know there's a header component here somewhere. We have the, is that a nav bar? There we go. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna just take a simple uh, nav, nav bar here. Uh, we're gonna take this one and we're gonna copy this code out. One thing we're gonna to have to do real quick is just run this through something like transform.tools. So we go HTML to JSX. And with that, we can copy this over. We'll make a new component real fast out of our directory. So a new folder called components. We'll make a header in there. And we're gonna go ahead and use our uh, tooling here to be able to export this file for us and we have our uh, header being exported. We'll import that over underneath app. And we'll just drop this right here on top. And we'll see how that looks. And we can see that we have the, uh, the UI here working more or less the way we'd expect. You can see here that the theme we're working with, uh, we had chosen a uh, cupcake, so we can kind of have a look to see how that will look or how it, we would expect it to look. Uh, coffee's not a bad theme, also not a bad idea right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at cupcake and see what this looks like. So this is what we'd expect to see. And so I'm seeing that I've got some uh, background uh, themes here. So let's go ahead and have a look at the theme behavior, make sure that I've got that the way that we want. So we see here, so instead of adding in the new custom uh, document uh, path for modifying our HTML, what I wanted to do is just go ahead and use a uh, special utility in this case called uh, theme provider. It essentially uses global variables and will change the name for variables in your CSS scope. 
what that does is it plays very well within Daisy UI, which has theme names in place. And so we're able to say, okay, theme provider, we're gonna go ahead and use the uh, cupcake theme. That just would allow us to change things around later on if we wanted to. Uh, but we can see now that that actually has applied the uh, look that we were looking for. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna hook up these buttons later on. We can do some other, other behaviors. In the next video, we're gonna add uh, the inputs. We're gonna be able to look at ingredients and actually uh, ordering pizzas for our friends and maybe work with some subscriptions as well to be able to see those orders coming in in real time. See you in the next video.